Hello, this is Julia Bushkova, uh, and today uh, we're continuing the series of basics uh, for the right hand, and um, we're going with the bow to the string and starting playing our basic bowings. Uh, the first uh, bowing that we always learn is called détaché. It's a French word for playing separate bows. Uh, usually one bow per note later it will be, but in general it's just a movement uh, and we always start in the middle of the bow. Those of you who might have started from the Suzuki books or you've never even seen Suzuki books, it doesn't absolutely matter, still the first thing in the books or anywhere else, every method will give you that bowing, this bowing first, détaché, and that's what we do. Uh, by this we mean movement on the string and I will actually go and start from the D string. Uh, before ever, before you ever play any music or any notes on the violin, uh, what you have to go through is to memorize the what we call levels of the elbow. And level of the elbow is just an expression really, it should be really called the vector of the elbow. I would imagine the vector of your arm with the bow and so on, but we just call it the level of the elbow. And what by that um, we all mean on D string, this is the D string is the string that is most, most horizontal, most parallel, the closest to parallel with the uh, floor. Okay, our violin of course is slightly slanted because most of you will be using some sort of help, support here. Uh, but even if you play without, it most likely will be slightly slanted. However, on D string, we can imagine that we are basically parallel to the floor. And if we're parallel to the floor, we look at the hair of the bow, in the middle of the bow, always in the middle, the middle of the bow, hair or the stick, it's up to you, um, your uh, level of your uh, wrist, and what we call level of the elbow, right, that, that point here, one, two and three, they all have to be in one plane with your shoulder, string, um, hair, elbow, wrist, in the middle of the bow. So, and you just stand there and you get used to it. Stand there for several seconds. Then you go and the same thing, you align yourself to the A string this way. The same way, one, two, three, and as if you can put a piece of paper on yourself here and it will not uh, be uneven, you know, a piece of glass or whatever you want to imagine. The same thing on E, so on E the elbow is the lowest and it's the closest to what I call free fall. Free fall is just when you let your arm just fall by your side, so E string is just slightly away from that, depending on how of course much you tilt your violin. We don't want to tilt the violin too much, but usually it's close to free fall, not quite there. Okay, that's your E string, and that's your A string, and this is your D string, and then on G you'll have to go all the way to the G level, because again, one, two, three, those points have to be all in one plane, okay? So, assuming that you are acquainted with this, we go to the D string, I would go to the D string and start moving the bow in small bows in the middle of the bow. And at first, I really would um, concentrate that your hand position just stays there. The bow is very short, really, uh, what it would be, three inches, I guess, in our American way of thinking, uh, or about 10 uh, centimeters, max, eight to 10 centimeters, short bows. And if it's, that's too fast of the movement, that may be too fast, you just go there and don't press with anything. Just be there uh, because your hand is slightly pronating to the index finger, it should. Because of this, it will a little bit add of the pressure already onto the string most likely, or if not, absolutely don't have to have any. In the middle of the bow, the same much of the bow. Now I will play with the slower, in the slower tempo. What's very important that I keep my eyes there on that hair and I see that I somewhere, somehow keep the bow parallel to the bridge. That is a physical necessity. You absolutely must 
learn how to do it on the short detaché bows. Uh, if that is very difficult at first to play what I just play, move and stop, and then move it up, and then again stop, and then stop, okay? Then go to another string, repeat the same thing, the same four notes, or eight, uh, but stop in between the fours, and pay attention how you move, how it sounds, and where your alignment is. Okay, very important. After you have done that, and you feel pretty much under control on all four strings, that's when I would suggest to start looking at the uh, enlarging the area with which you play. If you notice, I'm holding my violin here because I don't want to be doing anything with my uh, either head or neck or shoulders at all. So I support violin basically here right now and so should you. And so here we go again on D string. I will uh, drag my bow pretty much down and up or right and then left. And when I do this, if you notice, my wrist actually is yielding to the movement of the forearm and, um, well, in this case, actually mostly forearm because I'm already in the upper part of the bow. Um, for the movements of the forearm versus arm, the upper arm, forearm, and the wrist, please, please see my video playing with a straight bow. Very important. But that will be a bit later when you're using the whole bow. Right now we're playing detaché in the middle. So your wrist has to yield. So what else I'm doing right now to make, make a nicer sound? I am starting to apply a tiny bit of pressure with my index finger, but a very tiny bit. How tiny? Well, if you go here and you don't touch uh, and you don't press anything at all, so you lift your finger and you let it uh, drop, and then you just press, hmm, I don't know, two millimeters down. Very, very light, very, very light. So uh, touching yourself, your skin here, and then just touching a bit more, and then up, just kind of caressing lightly. Well, how you would pet your favorite dog or cat, that kind of sensation, but only with one finger, not with a whole hand. That's what you need to do, not more. And then you're getting a nice, what we call, mezzo forte sound. What you may notice is that I don't have my pinky on the bow, even though my pinky can easily reach there. But I, am, I was trained in, uh, in the school, you, you may want to say, uh, in the vein of playing, in the style of playing, when we uh, actually don't, don't keep our pinky when we go to the tip. And so from that, when you go a little bit more to the tip, my pinky, I just let it off the bow. I just, it just hangs there, but I don't ask it to go and reach. I don't want to constrain my hand at all. So on the way back, however, when I return from the um, tip of the bow, to the middle, my pinky can reach, that's when it will come onto the bow again. So again, this is how I was trained. You may uh, keep the pinky at first on the bow, just make sure that it is not straining to be there when you're enlarging the bow and you're going more to the tip. So that's with the pinky on, and that's with the pinky being let off. All right, so two ways. Now with this, I, after you manage to uh, get nice sound on open strings um, in the bigger, larger detaché, after that, the next thing I would recommend to start doing the bow patterns. And the patterns of the bow I will be explaining in the next video, bow patterns specifically. And until then, I wish you the best of practicing I hope this has been helpful. Subscribe, like, and I will see you all later.